Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are going to be working on the new oil spill collection ship or the oil spill cleaner. It is my newest vessel. It is based on the Alta um, tanker ship. However, it has been changed substantially to the point where I'm hoping you don't really feel that it's based on another ship. It should really have its own personality and be its own ship. So with that said, I want to take you on a quick tour and then I'm going to discuss what th remains to be fixed and done on this ship to get it ready for release. So follow along. Just keep in mind this is still a work in progress. Not everything is ready so what you see here still may be changed but the main portions are here. What I'm talking about is the decor, the details, the little details here and there still may be changed so of course when you're in the bridge here the first thing that you'll notice that is substantially different is there are two doors out and there's a big wraparound sort of area here and when you get to this you see that this cabin or the bridge is actually offset so that is done intentionally and it's done for a few reasons that i'm going to explain here so first things first it's offset which means the camera has a little post here and then up here is the actual area where you separate the ship and do all the oil collection so when there's an oil spill that happens there but pretty much this little area there is where that is controlled so likewise you can close it here and I did put alarms and lights so as it's happening people can't don't get crushed or you know fall off the ship so all that is there and it's a nice automated process actually if you watch the railings here once they clear the crane they automatically move out and join up so you have that little area around the crane where you could walk now here we have the um, the separator so you could actually turn up the power on the oil separator here and you can run the pumps now i'm going to add some other buttons here that will work on together so that is the main difference on this portion of the ship also if you walk your walk over here there is sort of a hole that you can access the deck very quickly if need be obviously this is all different from the alta tanker and the primary part being here kind of this so you obviously don't want to walk through this when it's not attached this little bump out is done in per on purpose but I do also want to reduce the amount of joints and things like I yeah you can go crazy with pivots and bodies but my first priority if you know my creations is to make sure it's lag free or as lag free as possible so just having too many bodies and pivots and stuff will make it more laggy so I don't really want to do that anyways with that said make note to fix that so there's going to be little things here and there it's not finished this creation so keep in mind when you see issues like that it's not the final thing anyways over here there is a hatch and you can see the separator down there so if you open up this hatch you can actually enter the room where the centrifugal separator is there's even a little window so you could see through it if the ships are separated obviously if they are attached then you see into the other separator room which is right here so this is here it's a very simple room it's not intended to be anything crazy with industrial things but it's all functional so what you have here behind you is the actual tank that fills up with oil and we have two tanks. We have one on the port side and one on the starboard side. And this is where the centrifugal separator works. This is where the seawater goes and goes back into the sea. Obviously, you can close this and collect it in the tank. And then this is where the oil that is processed goes. And it goes from here into this. Now, one thing that I want to... And obviously here, sorry, is the um, pumps that collect the seawater and pump it into the system. So one thing that I want to add is have a second line of um, processing because the first trial or the first run through here, there's still some water. It's not pure oil. So when you put it into here, you're not actually putting pure oil. So that's one thing. 
then I want to look at the actual um, balancing of the sides because what happens if well technically on this keypad here we don't have individual separators you just have the one and I was thinking of have them separate where you could turn on one to not have the other but my worry with that is if you end up um, sort of running one side you'll obviously make it's like a ballast tank you'll end up tipping onto one side or having a bit of a, a tilt so I don't want to have individual controls on this they're both working together and if you turn up the power on this thing you can see that your battery starts to drain like crazy so obviously there's the built-in generators that turn on on the engine and you could turn on your generator mode in the engine uh, room as well but because this, the, those uh, separators require them have the motors that need a lot of power there's actually a jet engine generator here with a large generator and note how it's on this side here on the port side where conveniently there's this sort of gap so the weight of putting this all on one side actually enabled us to put this here without much of an issue as far as um, balancing and center of gravity goes so this is not wired in yet so that's one thing that we want to work on as well but you can see the engine room has been expanded all the way to the hull here otherwise these areas will get a refresh and this area here will get a refresh it's not going to look the same as the auto tanker that doesn't make any sense and other than that we have a couple other things in my, in store the last and most important thing being the actual oil distillation which i may add so we're going to see also i didn't really bring attention this pump this is just a small auxiliary pump that you could use to actually plug into this and end up uh, moving between the two tanks manually so you just have these little things and you use this pump and you could manually move it around but we'll see if we can add a automated system for that as well so first things first we'll just uh, close this off actually I'm going to continue in the paint job or the dark paint job even if it's not technically a um, grading it just looks better and then over there it didn't have one because this one works perfectly so that's fine that does the trick and what else did we say so that was the first thing now in here actually one thing I wanted to change was this because it sounds like port oil tank I want to actually have it on the port side and then in here on the bra in brackets I'm gonna have starboard I'm gonna do the same thing for all of them there's three I wanted to have one inside of the tank or inside the uh, sort of uh, distillation no not distillation the separation area so that's the oil separation room or oil, oil separation yeah room area whatever and this is the port side and then this is the starboard side And I mean, room isn't the right thing. A room is like where you occupancy. This is just like a like what you'd call a cistern, or maybe bay is a better word. <clears throat> Oil separation bay on the port side, and okay. So with that done the last thing is up here there's these two dials that I just want to make sure are labeled the same way okay and with that now I want to have an automated balancing system also we need to connect this big crane so there's a couple of logistical issues and really it's a design criteria thing because my design criteria or my wish is to have an oil distillation plant built into this ship where it can actually separate that oil into diesel into jet fuel the jet fuel obviously powers the uh, generator jet here so with all that we have to have deck space and we're kind of running low on it 
So that's one thing that I for sure need to look into as well as obviously I do want to paint this area the same deck blue because really this is part of the deck. Once you open up those railings, there is no need for this to be a different color. But this is just simple painting. I want to get to the technical stuff with you guys. So that's really what I can't wait to start discussing. But you see here, that just kind of ties in better. Anyway, with that said, let's go to the oil separation. So, or oil balancing. So right now, this is our oil tank. Actually, that's not the best place to start. The best place is the second round of oil distillation. Okay, so you put it through here. I keep saying distillation. Oil separation. Okay, so we're separating oil from the water spilled outside, and we're going to put it through here. Of course, the first time around, maybe it doesn't actually end up processing it fully. And because we can't use the old um, filters anymore, we have to think of a different system. So the first thing that I had in mind was maybe we just pump directly from this line back into this, but that'll really slow things down and really it'll never get out. Like you're just gonna constantly be running through. So what I thought would be better is on this here to put a T-pipe. And I'm just gonna use the same color just like this and really you plug it into this chamber here chamber is probably the best word that I should have used it would be oil separation chamber instead of B might change that later so that works now except for the fact that we might get something funky going on with this pump because of this line so for sure I want to put a directional valve so we got to go in this direction and the next thing to do is put um, an actual valve. Now the purpose of the valve, as I'll explain in a second here, is to turn on the system that is going to be pumping in and out. And I'm going to actually put a valve here too, and I'll explain why. So right now this system looks a little bit more robust for what we're trying to do. If we ignore, if we ignore this new line here, look just at this, so pretty much this pump through that flat, that um, directional valve through this valve and it goes into the separator, that's fine. Now over here, we have to do the same thing. So first, this, this is not really done. I need to add a couple things. So this is fine for now, but what we'll have to do inside the wall and see now we have a bit of a struggle here, but what we're gonna do is quite simple. We'll just put this here and then rotate ourselves downwards. Okay, so I want this as well here because I only want it to be entering in this system. I don't want to be using, um, I don't want to accidentally go from the seawater into my tank. I want to have it go through that direction only. And I guess we could also put this here so it doesn't even enter the system. And then put this here course the direction on this I don't think it really plays a part but anyways we'll put it so it's right so that's in so with that, that this direction it's good then this is if we're trying to pump our second cycle if we call it that and the last thing we'll need is a pump now I'm just gonna go put a small pump here because realistically this is a much slower process So it could look something like this. And the idea is that whatever is in here, presumably there's going to be some water. You pump it through here, back into this, and the water should hopefully leave. And this should hopefully, you know, come back and be pure oil. So technically, I want, it to, I want to set it such that you could also run this system alone without the need for the main system. Like say you attach your ship back together, so you have this and you're going to your next oil spill, you could then start processing this. So you'll close off this valve here and you'll only run this cycle for the main tank. Now, all that needs to be connected to the electricity. 
and I actually have a new dedicated breaker for the oil collection and distillation. So we're just going to attach all that to the new breaker. And of course, when we turn on this pump with that button up there, that's when these valves open up because there's no need to run the pump without the valves. Just they go hand in hand. So you could be running the pumping system and the valve is going to be open or you turn off the pump and the valve and then you run this system or you run them together. So up here, I want to put another button. Now note how this is here. Like this isn't my final call it interface. I do want to do a little bit better of a system, but let's just say this is activate seawater pumps and this is going to be activate uh, second pass filtration of collected oil. So second pass filtration. Of course, we connect the button to the power and we connect this button to both the pump itself and this um, valve. So now both of them are attached. So they're gonna be open together. So you really never should get anything flowing in this direction due to all the sort of systems that we put here in place. Now, maybe it's not a bad idea to have another button in here that actually works that same system but really i don't really want to do that because if i do that then i open up a can of worms with what if you run this one and not the other one i want everything to be sequential i want most i want both of these systems to be done in parallel like as you're working on this side you're also working on this side so nothing should be done independently and that's why I also want to have them tied in together but anyways right now I'd say this second pass separation is fairly good we'll give it a trial run after but for now we're happy with that so the easiest way to connect these two tanks would be just to have a hose and a hole and they would be attached and even if you open up the hulls the line stays attached but my personal preference is a bit cleaner of a system so of course we have these pivots that have the fluid port up here and a fluid port here so we'll use that and then as well we have yet another one of the same things that we're gonna have to use as well for the um, the crane so this crane is sitting on the main part of the ship so to pump out the oil from it, we'll also have to have a line joining in. Maybe we could use the same line. Maybe we don't need to utilize both of them. But regardless, for now, what we'll do is we'll pass through this. And we'll pass through this area. And then we have to kind of go around because this is where the pump is. So we'll turn and this is where our chamber is. Now before I get too crazy onto that actually my other item of concern because we have a lot of things at stake right now is the actual oil distillation so where on earth am I gonna put it at one point I was thinking to put it on the back to extend the back out and have just the tall tower here for distillation and I may still do that but I do like the shape of it as it is and I don't really want to change it too much and the reason I'm bringing up the oil distillation is because we're obviously going to need areas for the jet fuel and the diesel to be stored. So right now we have this massive chamber here for all of our collected oil, but we may need to break it down a little further and have separate areas like this and this for jet fuel and for diesel. The ratio, I don't really know, like I don't quite know what ratio we should be trying to do but what I know is that it would be very nice to have space for them I mean maybe if we just separate it like this that might be the best way and then add this wall here so now you have this massive chamber here for oil and that's the easiest to collect as you go you're collecting it and then you have these two areas to fill up with jet fuel and diesel of course the diesel is also going to fill up our main gas tank 
and our diesel is gonna or our jet fuel is gonna power up our generator so that's sort of what I had in mind also attack of the scatterbrain I did now realize that right now this is our fuel tank for our ship this is where all the fuel is it's very small and the idea is that these areas are also the fuel tank for the ship but right now they're not connected to anything so this is the first thing that we have to connect or first thing to do this is a no-brainer and it's absolutely mandatory and absolutely required to get the ship uh, operational to its full potential so I'm gonna actually rotate these to flip the um, water uh, fluid to the lower level just because I want to not have to run as much piping for this system so we're just gonna flip it there you go and other than that it should still be identical and now our fluid is down there and we'll put identical systems here literally just um, running it down here to our fuel tank and if we go to this corner here that's gonna be the closest we can get it and we're gonna still need a pump so in addition to putting this here we'll need a pump to pump the water or to pump the diesel out of this through here and into the other tank so the other tank is going to be located down here yeah right here so same type of situation almost an identical system so rotate this and we'll go straight into there and this one doesn't even need to have a pump so it's just a very simple piping system we can save weight if we actually put it in, into the walls which may be the way to go to be honest so we don't add add weight for our system what is this wall this wall is currently attached to nothing so that's the most efficient way to do it and then we know for sure we're not I mean in the grand scheme of things the added weight doesn't really matter that much but may as well may as well where we can just make sure that it's orientated properly and there we go so that now is working this this side is even more optimized or better we don't have to pass RPS through it that's fine we'll repaint that in a bit over here yeah we can have actually eh, whatever for this one it doesn't matter so much to do the um, inside the wall anyways that pumps out of this through the pump up there and into the other tank the other tank is where the engines get their power so they actually are fed from that other tank do we want to put valves honestly like a what are they called these gas relief valve or fluid relief valve maybe maybe so we don't transfer over the uh we don't transfer over anything but the actual diesel itself so maybe that's what we should do on both sides here put the gas or liquid relief valve which pretty much is a liquid filter it allows liquids to pass so by putting that we're not really or should not be compressing either of the tanks um i did have mixed results with that if you watched my other videos but we're just gonna go and assume that that's the best way if we have an issue where we starve out our engine then we're gonna be then we're gonna be hooped so then we'll see and what's gonna what's going to happen at that point so this is a critical system actually is it critical or is it drivetrain technically I'd say this is part of the drivetrain system and what I want to do is have this pump running as soon as the engines are on so when the engines are turned on we have a sequence of things that happens but what we have to follow this trail here because when this engine starts then the key input is this because we can actually have the engine start from a variety of things including the generators if the generators start up then um 
then there's other things happening. So it's this one here. So if the generators start or whatever, then, then we need to make sure that these pumps are running and pumping uh, the diesel into here. Hopefully the pumps can keep up with the f speed at which we use the diesel, but also something I wanna almost test as well is if we didn't have a pump, if we just had the two tanks almost connected as such, would it, would the water or would the, would the engines consume the diesel by itself? Like, would it flow through here or would it not flow through here? Maybe it would. Maybe all we need is a simple flow valve or flow directional valve and it's going to not need a pump. So I'm not sure. I think that's what I want to try first because these things have a speed at which they can go. Whereas if we just have a simple directional valve, then ideally the system will just work such that it treats it like two tanks in parallel. Like if we have two tanks in full parallel, like this and this, and then if you have some pipes and then another one of these, you don't need to have a pump pumping from one to the other. They're just gonna flow automatically. So maybe, just maybe, and just hopefully, this system works the exact same way. And all we need then is this. And then it'll actually pretty much consume the diesel, or consume the, uh, yeah, consume the diesel from here and from there. So we'll have to see how that works. That's one of those things that I don't quite know, but see, that was, that was vital to connect these tanks. And also with that being done, the actual capacity of our tanks drastically increases because now we're no longer just working with um, the sing simple uh, one tank. We actually have to have the, them add up and give us their total. So we're just going to do this and we'll want both of them and I'll explain why in a second. Pretty much, we have a few gas tanks. Just have to find them. First one is here. So, let's take the first one and put the liquid meter capacity. There we go. So this here, liquid level and liquid capa fluid capacity over there we have them, and over there we have ones that are actually connected. You can see the, the lines go. So what I want to do is start with that one first and take capacity, and I'll put capacity, or sorry, this is the fluid capacity. Take this one, branch it to this, and then this capacity, we'll take it from here, branch it to this. So now nothing is going here. So then this one on the left-hand side is going to be our new call it capacity. So the capacities all go here. And the reason we have this calculation is for the like um, distance calculator, all that good stuff that all needs the capacity. Over here, we have it connected to a bunch of stuff. So let's begin nice and slowly. We have to move all of them to this branch. But what's going to happen is, as we do that, everything is going to make more and more sense. And that's the last one. Done. So now this should go to here. And then the last one should go to there, liquid level. So now we should be getting our total fluid and total gas. It would be good to have a number that actually, or a place that actually checks our individual areas or individual tanks. Maybe I put it over here. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm just going to take a simple dial system because really all we need is to understand if we're consuming the diesel from all the tanks or if we're just consuming it from the, the one that's connected to our superstructure. So that's the one I'm going to put in the middle. And it should be beneath our engines down here. Liquid level. 
And then the port side one, I'm gonna put on the left-hand side up here so it matches. And this one, I'm gonna put on this one here. So call this main diesel tank. And then this is gonna be the port diesel tank and starboard. And we'll find out the capacities, whatever, like it's probably 10,000 or something. The ones that are in the extended part of the hull are going to be even bigger than the main, main one. But anyways, everything's attached now, so that's going to be good. It's going to give us some data on how we're actually using the diesel and if it's being consumed. All right. We're back to the oil distillation and with that I want to know where the best place to put one of these tanks are now realistically this isn't that big of a space for comparison if we take a look at my distillation trailer that I am yet to release but it's in the works like it's fairly sizable to the point where it would not fit on the deck of this like I wouldn't be able to put it on the deck and have it there so I need to do some reduction and some sort of tweaking around of it but it serves as a good starting point for what we're trying to do here obviously the trailer part does not matter but it does have some good microcontrollers and some good inter an interface here that i'm just going to pretty much use for the distillation part of the ship and in here is the distillation bit so it's very <laughs> um small intentionally small to just uh serve a purpose so i think if we do that and a tower of that raises up it'll be much easier than having the whole trailer lift up and then the rest of the tanks can just live below deck however that's all the time we have for this video stay tuned for part two where we're going to continue to build the distillation chamber on the ship as well as test the other systems that we installed just now hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you enjoyed the showcase of this ship sort of before it's released and hopefully enjoyed it. So stay tuned for more creations, more content, and as always, happy storm mixing everyone.